One of the common reasons for the sudden decline and death of trees, shrubs and hedges is the lethal root rot caused by honey fungus. Yet there are several species, some of which are more harmful than others. I'd like to show you how to recognise if you have a problem with honey fungus in your garden and how to minimise its impact. Here are some symptoms to look for on a woody plant. When a plant's roots are rotted with honey fungus, the symptoms above ground look like drought stress, where the branches die back. The leaves of dying plants appear sparse, small or pale, or show premature autumn colour but stay hanging on the tree. The bark may crack or weep close to ground level. Flowers and fruits may fail to develop, or an unusually heavy crop may form in the plant's final season. The changes may be sudden or gradual, and for a hedge, the dead patch gets wider over time. The only surefire way to know if a plant has honey fungus in its roots is to peel back the bark right at the soil level. Underneath the bark, between that and the wood, you will find a flat whitish sheet of mycelium with a strong mushroom smell. Honey fungus mushrooms appear in the autumn months. When fresh, these look like clumps of buff or honey coloured mushrooms, often with dark centres and white gills and spores underneath. Mushrooms do not appear every year, but are seen more often when the plant is already dead or dying. Lookalikes to honey fungus mushrooms that are actually beneficial fungi include sulfur tuft. These bright yellow clumping mushrooms differ in that they have darker spores and no ring on the stem. The fungus spreads by dark, almost black rhizomorphs, sometimes called bootlaces. They attach to the tree roots and grow through the soil. They can resemble plant roots, but they can be very brittle, especially from the most pathogenic species. They're not always present, and in fact, finding abundant, tough rhizomorphs can indicate that the weaker species is what you have. With trees, remove the dead tree and leave the area empty for at least six months up to one year. When removing dead plants, remove as many roots as possible. The more roots you can remove, the less food the fungus will have and the faster it will die off. Consider redesigning the area by creating a lawn or an annual meadow. Never compost disease material. Dispose of it by burning or in landfill. Make observations and note down if the disease spreads. If several healthy trees die within a year or two, this may indicate the strongly pathogenic species of honey fungus is present. However, over the same time frame, if only one plant dies from honey fungus and it was already struggling, you might have the weaker species, so you could prefer to tolerate it. It could even stop the more pathogenic species from getting into a garden. The biggest tool you have against honey fungus infection is maintaining general good health in your plants. Ensure they have sufficient access to water and nutrients, don't over prune them, don't bury them too deeply. And mulching can be a really good way to boost plant health as long as it's done in the right way. Never bury the stem, instead lay it in a donut shape around the tree. Unfortunately, honey fungus can infect a very wide range of plants. So thinking about what you might want to plant in your garden is not an easy task. I would start by thinking about what is your garden like and pick plants that match your conditions so they won't be stressed when you plant them. Then I would cross-reference your ideas with our honey fungus plant list that you can find on our website, as this indicates the level of resistance we think different plants have against honey fungus. Honey fungus is really common, and I hope this video has given you a head start to understanding what it's all about. 